10, extreme pumpkin stars. These are on the list for two reasons. One, they're called pumpkin stars, which make me think of Halloween, which means therefore spooky. Two, they're kind of scary. Yeah. Ever ask yourself the question of what happens to a star when they spin really, really, really fast? Faster than average? Me neither, but here we are. They spin so fast, they've earned the name pumpkin stars as they tend to have a squash-like shape. To put into perspective as to how fast they spin, our star takes one full month to complete a rotation, whereas these bad boys complete one every few days, about five, three to five. As a result, they not only have an odd shape, but they release an absurd amount of star spots, solar flares, prominences, along with a ton, a ton of x-ray emissions. With the amount of radiation coming off of these guys, on top of their intense gravitational pull, we do not want to be anywhere close to them. Number nine, Jupiter's hydrogen sea. Staying a little longer in our own galaxy, here's another reason why Jupiter does not lend any ideas when it comes to dreaming up future real estate. One of the things we are looking for is, of course, water. And though Jupiter has a sea, it's not the one we are looking for. Take a dive into Jupiter's hydrogen sea and your skin would melt off of your body. You'd also be compressed together given the immense pressure the closer you get to the bottom. So yeah, not a great vacation spot. Sharks would be the absolute least of your worries. Number eight, Venus. Though Venus is technically considered Earth's twin in many ways, it's more like an evil twin. Where Earth supports life, Venus makes it entirely impossible for it to exist, making it one of the most dangerous places in our solar system. The atmosphere is a thick and toxic cloud of carbon dioxide, and if that doesn't kill you, the acid clouds will. Ugly yellow clouds crowd the skies made entirely of sulfuric acid, making Venus the hottest planet in our solar system, even though it's farther from the sun. The clouds create a runaway greenhouse effect, which means the noxious gases prevent thermal radiation from leaving, therefore trapping the heat inside. Surface temperatures reach about 475 degrees Celsius, which is about 445 degrees too hot for me. I tap out at like 30. Oh, and did I mention that the ground is riddled with massive volcanoes as well? Unless we find a miraculous way to terraform the crap out of this bad boy, best to stay far, far away in a land called Earth. Number seven, ones that move. Black holes are pretty damn scary, so what could possibly be more terrifying? Answer, more than one and they move. It's like when you see a spider on a wall. What's more scary, when you see it on the wall across from you or when it starts getting closer or worse yet, disappear? But unfortunately, we can't get a fly swatter and shoo this thing away. Apparently, there is a black hole the size of Jupiter with a mass 300,000 times that of our sun, and it's just wandering around our galaxy, collecting destruction as it goes. If this guy got anywhere close to our solar system, we wouldn't know what hit us before it was too late. By the time we figured out what was happening, Jupiter's atmosphere and all those after it would already be sucked into its clutches. We just be sitting ducks. Can't think of anything more terrifying than that. Except, of course there is. Number six, supermassive electric current. Close your eyes and think of the most fantastic and terrifying lightning storm you've ever seen. Now take that number of lightning bolts you're picturing in your head and times that by a trillion. Pretty hard to do, but something like that actually exists. At the center of the galaxy known as 3C303 is of course a black hole, but somehow this one has generated the largest electrical current known in the entire universe. It was discovered by the University of Toronto, yay, go TO, and measured 10, 18 amperes. That's like one trillion lightning bolts going off at the same time. Can't even imagine what that looks like, though I definitely don't want to see it in person. Number five, the hand of God. Studies suggest that if anything like this was pointed directly at Earth, it would cause mass extinction. Sounds like something God would do. Remember Noah? Yeah. But getting back to science, the reason this pulsar wind nebulae is called the hand of God is because of the weird hand-like shape it creates as it wanders about. Something scientists can't quite explain. What also makes it special is that the nebulae is actually a neutron star rotating at an incredibly high velocity that emits volatile radio waves and electromagnetic radiation. That amount of power would cause doom to any planet nearby. So. 
Let's thank the stars that we are nowhere near this anomaly. Number four, boots void. Have you ever become disoriented while swimming underwater or in a dark room? Didn't know which way was up or down? Well, some would speculate that that would be your experience should you ever enter a boots void. You know, if somehow you live long enough for humanity to begin traveling space and time. Like, kudos to you for staying so healthy. But anyways, similar to a black hole, but yet at the same time wholly different, Boots Void has scientists baffled. It's essentially a hole in the universe where galaxies never formed. Around 350 million light years wide and a billion light years from Earth, scientists can't seem to unravel why nothing formed there. It's so confusing and poses so many questions that scientists may now have to reevaluate how the universe even started in the first place to accommodate the existence of Boots Void. It doesn't follow any typical pattern of the universe, but that doesn't mean to say that scientists are without theories. One hypothesis is that the void formed when two smaller voids collided. Boots isn't entirely empty as it contains a mere sprinkle of galaxies arranged in a kind of tube-like shape. This seems to imply that a collision occurred, but so far there's no way to know for sure. So what the heck is it? Number three, RXJ 1347. If you hate winter and love sweltering in tanning beds and basking in the mythical dry heat, I may have found a place that's too hot for even you. In fact, it's too hot for everyone and anything. And no, it's not the surface of the sun. You think I'd be that simple? No. It's RXJ 1347, the hottest place known in the universe. The level of heat it reaches is so unfathomable that I might as well not say it because it will just scramble our brains. Of course I'm going to anyways, but you know what I mean. RXJ 1347 is a gas cloud surrounding a galaxy cluster in the constellation of Virgo. It's theorized that it was produced when two galaxies collided, which caused one of the most violent explosions since the Big Bang. You know, the thing that started the universe. So how hot is it? Over 300 million degrees Celsius. Number two, magnetars. Magnetars are the most powerful magnets in the universe. They are a form of neutron stars with an ultra powerful magnetic field and could erupt at any time. Could be hours, days, weeks, or months. Who knows? Magnetars form after a massive star explodes and collapses into a neutron star, but scientists aren't quite sure as to why they evolve into magnetars. Presumably, it's related to the velocity speed of the explosion, but just how powerful are they? Well, according to science, their magnetic field is so powerful that if a marshmallow, odd example I know, but bear with me, if a marshmallow came anywhere near it, it would slam into the star's surface with a force of a thousand hydrogen in bombs. A marshmallow! Now imagine what would happen if you came anywhere near it. Scientists know that we have around 10 in our galaxy, but based on current patterns, there could be thousands more surrounding us. And last but not least, the hypernova. Remember when I said RXJ 1347 was one of the most violent explosions since the Big Bang? Well, this one takes second place to the one that started the universe. That is, according to astrophysicist Q. Daniel Wang. Around 25 million light years away, scientists found what looked like the remains of a massive celestial explosion called a hypernova. If a supernova happens when a gigantic star collapses, creating a massive explosion, a hypernova is that times 1000. A hypernova is the result of when the core of the star collapses into a black hole, which then creates two twin energetic jets on either side. So essentially a black hole with two powerful world destroying lasers on either side. Essentially the death star. The beams of light are actually made of gamma rays, which are a more powerful form of light. Keep in mind, supernova can and have destroyed planets, sometimes whole galaxies. Imagine what this thing could do. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have Gliese 581c. Gliese 581c is considered an exoplanet, which basically just means that it's a planet that is not in our solar system, a planet located 20 light years away. It is a planet that is in the constellation of Libra. This is a planet that only ever faces its star, which is known as tidally locked. The side facing the star experiences scorching temperatures, which would literally make you melt. And the other side experiences extreme frozen temperatures. In between both of the extremes, though, is a small bit of land that has good weather conditions that it could possibly support alien life. It very well may already, and we may find out in the year 2029 as we sent a message to the planet in 2008, and we're expecting it to get there then. It probably won't get back to us till 2050 if there is even a return message, so I wouldn't hold your breath. 
In our number nine spot, we have Gliese 436b, another planet from outside our solar system. This planet is 30 light years from Earth, and it is located in the constellation of Leo. This planet is interesting because it is at a distance of about 15 times closer to the sun than Mercury is, but it continues to be covered in ice. It is said that the temperature is about 439 degrees Celsius, which is 822 degrees Fahrenheit. So how the heck does its ice surface not melt? Apparently, it's because of gravity. The gravity on the planet is so strong that it compresses any traces of water vapor in the planet's atmosphere, and it then turns into solid ice, and this prevents it from melting. In our number eight spot, we have a sapphire and ruby planet. This is a planet named Hat P7b. Honestly, NASA, if you need someone to help you come up with names for your new planets that you discover in the future, I'm your gal. Whoever signed off on this name maybe needs a vacation to replenish their creative juices. This planet is an exoplanet located in the Cygnus constellation and is about 1,000 light years away. Apparently the planet has high precipitation of aluminum oxide and its crystallized form is usually rubies and sapphires. And so that's how it's got its name of being the planet that rains rubies and sapphires. Along with this though, the planet does experience some crazy violent storms. So apparently it is believed due to this, the gemstones are all over the planet scattered, but still super cool. I hope we're able to send a rover there someday to retrieve some of the gems. I know we have them here on the planet, but still, a ruby from another planet is so much cooler. In our number seven spot, we have the raining glass planet. HD 189773b is quite the unusual planet. It is a large planet being larger than Jupiter and it is located about 62 light years away. It's a beautiful azure color, which is just a shade of blue. Its atmosphere is what makes it strange. It is made up of silicate atoms and particles mostly. It also has high wind speeds that can reach up to as high as 5,400 miles per hour. For perspective, that's around two kilometers a second. Jeez. Its temperature can reach over 900 degrees Celsius and 1,652 degrees Fahrenheit. The planet is known as the raining glass planet because yes, it literally rains glass sideways. That is really hard to imagine and just kind of terrifying, so I'm gonna maybe move on. In our number six spot, we have the planet that eats light. The wasp 12b planet is an exoplanet that is known for how dark it is. It is known for being twice the size of Jupiter and its atmosphere temperature is around 4,600 degrees Celsius, which is 8,312 degrees Fahrenheit. I googled that. On one side of the planet, it basically eats light as it doesn't reflect light into space. It apparently can trap 94% of the visible starlight falling into the atmosphere. The planet orbits so close to its star that it has a fixed day side and night side. The night side is, of course, much colder than the side that is eating all of the visible light. It is known as a hot Jupiter as it orbits very, very close to its star and it's heated to enormous temperatures. In our number five spot, we have the pink planet. Strangest planet or is this the coolest planet? I have to admit that I'm a bit biased as pink is my favorite color. Orange is in a close second, so it's going to be cool to me because I just love the color. <laughs> this is another exoplanet that is named Gliese 504b and it is considered a Jovian planet. Apparently it orbits its star at close to nine times the distance that Jupiter orbits the sun. Damn. It also weighs in at four times Jupiter's mass. It is within the constant constellation of Virgo. It is believed that since the planet is pretty new, it is newly formed, that is why the surface is so pink. Well, hopefully it stays this way so we can get rid of that theory because the universe needs a beautiful pink planet. Not that that does anything or changes anything, perhaps purely for the viewing pleasure for us and aliens out there on other planets. In our number four spot, we have the dark planet. There is a planet that has been discovered that is extremely dark called 
Tres 2B. This planet is so dark that it has been said that it is darker than coal. That's pretty dark. In fact, in 2011, the planet was identified as the darkest known exoplanet as it apparently reflects less than 1% of light that hits it. The little light that is reflected is a bit red, and so that's what gives the planet a red hue. And I wish we had a way to visit all of these planets in person. Why can't Star Wars be real life? Ah, who agrees with me? In our number three spot, we have the ocean planet. There is a planet in our solar system that is completely and entirely ocean. The ocean is spread across the entirety of the planet. Whoa. The planet is also known as a super Earth, which means it is larger than Earth, but it is significantly smaller in mass and radius. It was discovered in 2013 by NASA that the planet may have its own clouds too. Cool. In our number two spot, we have the diamond planet. 55 Cancri E is an extraordinary planet that is more popularly known as the diamond planet. It is 40 light years away from Earth, located in the constellation of Cancer. It is another super Earth planet that is twice the size of Earth and is nearly eight times more massive and twice as dense. It is believed that the planet is largely carbon and it has a high pressure and surface temperature, and that is why it is believed to be covered in diamonds. Yes, that's right, diamonds. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. <laughs> it is believed to be about 4,417 degrees Fahrenheit and 2,400 degrees Celsius. It orbits its planet star fully in only 18 hours as it is quite close to it. Coming up in our number one spot, we have the lava planet. The Kepler 78b is a strange planet indeed. It is known as the lava planet, and as you can probably guess, that is because it is mostly or entirely, we're, we're not very sure at this point, covered in lava. It is an exoplanet in the Cygnus constellation, and it is a planet that is super close to its parent star. So close that it is said to be only 550,000 miles away. Its temperature is approximately 2,030 degrees Celsius and 3,680 degrees Fahrenheit. Despite the fact that it is basically a lava planet, it is similar to our planet in many ways, such as in mass, density, and radius. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Van Allen Radiation Belt. The Explorer 1 was the first satellite that was launched by the United States, and of course, right off the bat, we were finding some unexpected, slightly unsettling things. Launched on February 1st, 1958, this satellite was the first to discover the Van Allen Radiation Belt. Basically, the radiation belt is a zone of charged energetic particles, most of which originate from solar wind. These particles are captured and then held around a planet's magnetosphere. So while other planets can and do have these belts, Earth has two main ones, but sometimes others are created temporarily. Basically, these belts help to protect our atmosphere from destruction, so we like the belts. But when discoveries like this one happened, it reminds us of how dangerous space can really be. So NASA launched some space probes that were meant to specifically check out the belts, and in 2013, it was reported that the Van Allen probes had discovered a transient third radiation belt. This third belt was observed for just four weeks until it ended up being obliterated by a powerful interplanetary shockwave from the sun. How terrifying is that? Left just as quickly as it came. Thankfully, our main two are still intact, and that really is all we can hope for. In our number nine spot today, we have TESS. New data from NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite is showing that it has been able to discover 5,000 objects of interest. The list of objects has been growing since 2018, and in the last year alone, it has increased by one 1,600. Here's the thing about this list of objects of interest though. They're of interest because they are thought that they might possibly harbor some kind of alien life. Whether it's the smallest, most primitive forms or something more, it's all exceptionally interesting and the list is growing faster and faster every year, which is a testament to the great work being done by the teams responsible for the mission. As of right now, the next step in the test mission will be taking place in 2025, which will hopefully reveal more candidates for planets. In our number 8 spot today, we have Ahuna Mons. In 2015, during the time of NASA's Dawn mission, this little orbiter made a startling discovery near the equator of a dwarf planet called Cirrus. This discovery came in the shape of a volcano sort of mountain that was later revealed by NASA to be a cryovolcano that, when active, releases frigid, salty water, sometimes mixed with mud, in place of the molten lava that we see on an Earth-style volcano. In the photos of the volcano, you can see these super interesting bright streaks that run down the sides, which experts say are salt deposits that are left over from the formation of it. It is said
said that basically plumes of salt water and mud rose up and erupted from the planet, which punctured the surface and created the mountain we can see now. Perhaps not the scariest thing on this list, but seeing how differently other worlds formed to ours always leaves me with so many questions. In our number 7 spot today, we have Mount St. Helens. Over 40 years have passed since the huge, devastating eruption of Mount St. Helens that truly changed the landscape of the Pacific Northwest for hundreds of miles. While this may not have been the most huge and devastating blast ever in the history of the Earth, the thing that sets this one apart is the technology we have available to us now. Since the eruption, experts and researchers have been able to obtain the satellite imagery from the days around the eruption, which occurred on May 18, 1980. This imagery came from the Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite 3, and this was very, very useful because rather than a land satellite, which follows a predetermined ground track in order to collect imagery from the entire planet, this satellite provides a constant view of the same area, which is normally great for monitoring weather, but this time it just allowed us to see one of the worst eruptions in US history unfold. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Tonga eruption. Speaking of volcanic eruptions, there are some incredibly terrifying images that were captured of the Tonga volcanic eruption that occurred just recently. This powerful underwater volcano eruption unleashed a force that was equivalent to 4 to 18 megatons of TNT. It blanketed the island nation of Tonga in ash, it sent tsunami waves across the world, and it even sent ripples through Earth's ionosphere, the outer layer of the atmosphere. The same sort of satellite used to capture the imagery of Mount St. Helens, the one that examines the same area, also were able to capture the Tonga eruption, and it truly shows you just how powerful the blast really is. You can see very clearly the umbrella cloud, you can see shock waves and even lightning strikes. These images are a terrifying reminder of just how devastating these blasts can be, while there is little to nothing that we can do to stop it. In our number 5 spot today, we have Tilly the Turtle. Apparently this is now just a list of volcano related satellite imagery, but I swear this one was so interesting I had to share it with you. So it is again related to the Tonga volcano, but it involves a little turtle named Tilly. So Tilly was rescued a few years ago after being stuck in a net with no hope of survival, and she was brought to a special rehabilitation center to help her recover. In November of 2020, Tilly was ready to be released back into her proper home, so she was tagged with a special transmitter and released at Flynn Reef, just off the coast of Cairns. Once released, Tilly began her journey east towards the Pacific Islands, and since she had that little tracker on her, her journey could be watched. This is where the satellite imagery comes in. The citizens of the Great Barrier Reef tracking map shows that Sweet Tilly traveled 1,867 kilometers over 47 days, but then, just two days before the Tonga eruption, seemingly out of nowhere, she made a huge U-turn and started heading back towards the Queensland coast. Tilly knew something was about to happen. Jenny Gilbert from the rehabilitation center where Tilly recovered said, quote, she was obviously feeling something. There must have been vibrations, and she has turned around and started heading back towards Queensland. You hear about these stories, particularly with tsunamis, where animals try to start getting themselves out of the danger zone. I've never seen it happen before, and I think it's just incredible. This might be more fascinating than unsettling, but it just reminds us of how brilliant the animals we share the earth with really are, and while we are rightfully concerned about the humans who were affected by this eruption, it also must have been pretty terrifying for the animals in the area as well. All around, just a horrible situation. In our number 4 spot today, we have GSN 069. I think we can all agree that getting close to a black hole would be an exceptionally terrifying experience for anyone, especially considering a brush with one is likely to mark the end of an object's journey, but that isn't always the case. In the galaxy that we refer to as GSN 069, there is a star that is currently orbiting a black hole and managing to survive while undergoing some pretty extreme changes. According to astronomers, this star was first a red giant when it began to approach the black hole, but as it first swept past, the huge siphoning black hole ate up all of the star's outer hydrogen layers, which eventually left it as a white dwarf. Now this white dwarf has become trapped in a sort of oblong orbit around the black hole because while it's close, it's just out of reach enough that it hasn't fallen in yet. The star is at a distance of about 15 times the radius of the event horizon of the black hole, and each lap around takes about 9 hours. Another unusual thing about this orbit is due to the gravity of the black hole, which is of course going to 
to have a major influence. Each time the star orbits, it's being flung in a slightly different direction, which means that its orbit rotates over time and it ends up resembling a sort of rosette. In our number three spot today, we have Kepler 78b. Kepler 78b is an exoplanet that finds its cozy home orbiting around the star called Kepler 78. Its first discovery came in 2013 by the Kepler Space Telescope, and upon discovery, it was thought that this exoplanet was the most similar to Earth because of its mass, radius, and mean density. It's a terrestrial planet, it likely has an iron core, what more could we look for in a planet? Well, we could definitely look for one that isn't hellishly hot like this one. This exoplanet orbits around its parent star once every eight and a half hours, and it's super close to it. Like I'm talking 40 times closer to its star than Mercury is to our sun. That's way too close. Kepler 78b likes to feature a temperature of around 2030 to 2830 degrees Celsius, which would likely be a little uncomfortable. The temperature is high enough that it has stripped the planet of any stable atmosphere, and it is said that instead of being an Earth-like planet, Kepler 78b is more like a lava planet. To put an even more interesting twist on this wild, hot exoplanet, according to the astronomer Dimitar Sasilov from the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, quote, this lava world is an abomination. There's no physical way a small world, only 12% larger than Earth, could have evolved in that location and there's no known mechanism that could have transported it there. But one thing that is certain, it can't stay roasting in that hellish orbit for long. It's destined to get swallowed by its star very soon. Right now, it is estimated that Kepler-78b is going to be swallowed by a star in about 3 billion years, which is just another reason we can cross it off our list for Earth 2.0. In our number 2 spot today, we have ESO 593IG008. This is a discovery that first came with the Hubble Space Telescope, and it showed us one Thing, but when re-examined later with the ESO's very large telescope, it showed us more details. With the Hubble images, ESO 593IG008 was previously known as a pair of interacting galaxies at a distance of 650 million light years. One is a spiral galaxy, while the other is more irregular. And while this is already supremely interesting, the VLT images revealed quite the surprise. This surprise came in the way of a third, clearly separate, massive galaxy that seems to be forming stars as frantically as possible. Some areas of these colliding galaxies are moving faster than 400 kilometers a second, and it's said that seeing three galaxies of this size merging is something that is quite rare. While it is very unsettling to think of a three galaxy collision, the imagery from it is absolutely stunning. In our number one spot today, we have the Super Void. This is a discovery that was first seen by NASA's WMAP satellite in 2004, and it was later confirmed in 2013 by the ESA's Planck mission. Basically, there's a cold spot in the universe which could be seen clearly in the radiation left from the Big Bang, and we aren't quite sure what it is or what it means. Throughout the years, every time we've attempted to remap the cosmic microwave background with more resolution and better technology than we previously had, one of the mysteries that always remains is the cold spot, and it gets more peculiar every time. Quite recently, a new theory that could possibly explain the cold spot was put forward, and at the moment, it seems like it's a theory that most people are agreeing with. Basically, it has to do with a super void. The cosmic web is made up of clusters and super clusters of galaxies, and they are pulled to each other by gravity, of course, and sometimes they are accelerated away from each other by the mysterious, not quite understood force that is dark energy. Between these clusters of galaxies are what are called voids, the areas that contain fewer galaxies, which in turn means they contain less matter. So basically, there's a super void, one of the largest known to humanity, and it's located within the constellation of Eridanus. It's a massive, elongated, cigar-shaped void that's just a cool 1.8 billion light years wide, and it's said that it contains 30% less matter than the surrounding galactic regions. It is thought that perhaps this huge super void might be responsible for the cold spot, but at this point, there are still tons of questions that are just waiting to be answered. All right, let's start this video off with a roar at number 10. In 2006, a group of Californian astronomers heard something very loud and very strange. The team were attempting to detect the very first stars in the universe, but instead of seeing old cosmic light, instead they heard an almighty radio wave roar. In 
fact, the roar was six times greater than the combined admission of all known radio sources ever made. So loud. While this wasn't the sound of the Big Bang, it was the sound of something mysterious from the early beginnings of the universe, something more intense and much louder than we were ever ever able to encounter. What could it have been, honestly? I don't know. Coming into number 9, we have the really sad and scary tale of Wasp 12b. Exoplanet Wasp 12b flew too close to the sun. Literally. It's currently being devoured by its sun. It's a pitch black planet in the midst of destruction, but there are signs that it may have once been a little like Earth. Researchers have noticed evaporating water vapour in the atmosphere of the planet. Wasp 12b is bigger than Jupiter and is now oval shaped because of the effect that being gobbled up has had on the planet's structure. In 2010, the Hubble Space Telescope was able to capture a glimpse of the planet being eaten, although it is a slow dining process. It seems that actually, the planet will slowly be sucked up bit by bit into the burning hot sun over the next 10 million years. Wow, that is one long dinner. It likely had moons that were swallowed first as appetizers. Honestly, how sad and, you know, terrifying. Coming into number 8, we have the faces of Mars. There are a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding Mars, and although we still have so much to learn about it, it is perhaps our most photographed planet. Those photos have sometimes shown something pretty crazy though. In 1976, the Viking orbiter passed over the surface of Mars and took this picture. Um, whatever it is, it stands at twice the height of the Empire State Building. Some people were quick to jump to the conclusion that Mars was actually once home to an ancient civilization. Others simply called it paradelia, the phenomena of seeing faces. In 2010, Rover Spirit took this image, which many say features a woman walking on the surface of Mars. Hmm. Again in 2015, it was questioned whether or not a goblin face had been spotted. What is happening with Mars and all of the faces, honestly? Coming in at number 7, this freaks me out, we have the music of the moon. Just months ahead of the Apollo 11 mission that saw humans walking on the surface of the moon for the first time, astronauts went on the Apollo 10 mission just to basically scope the place out a little more. Now the mission passed around the moon. It took place in May 1969 and when the spacecraft was orbiting the dark side of the moon, they lost all radio contact with ground control and the rest of the Earthlings. What happened? Something really weird. As Apollo careered around the moon, they heard some very, very strange and disconcerting sounds, like really weird sounds. In the now declassified recordings from space, we hear a very strange wooing sound. We can also hear the astronauts talking about it with one another extensively. Now, the weird sounds were not reported at the time, but they were recorded and received by NASA when the mission returned to Earth. They were kept a secret until 2008, but since their declassification, we we can now hear the alleged sounds ourselves. Check them out. Sounds out of space, doesn't it? Do you hear that? That whistling sound? Yeah. Ooh, coming in at number six, we have the snakes. Dr. Musgrave is a veteran astronaut who went on six shuttle missions. The man has six academic degrees and was a member of the Marine Corps. It seems that after a period of silence, he revealed that he thought he saw some kind of space snakes during one of his missions. In 1994, he said, On two of my missions, and I still don't have an answer, I have seen a snake out there. That's right, guys, on two of his missions. He continued by saying, Six or seven or eight feet long. He said that the snake followed him around for a long time long period of time out of the window and he tried to communicate with it. Dr. Musgrave thinks that they have their own propulsion technique. Now actually, it seems that in 1979, a Soviet astronaut also saw something long and strange out there too. A possible alien signal up next at number 5. We have WOW. In 1977, Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope detected something extremely strange and so shocking that the people recording it simply wrote down the word Wow. They heard it and they were like, wow. The wow signal came from the Sagittarius constellation, which is about 5,000 light years away. Now, the surprising sound lasted for 72 whole seconds and then was never heard of ever again. This is what it sounded like. Many 
many scientists agree that it sounded like it could be of extraterrestrial origin. Is it an alien signal? If it was, it would have been sent many thousands of years ago, so who intended it for us? They're probably long gone. Coming in at number four, we have the dark matter. Weirdly, our universe seems to contain some mystery dark spots. In fact, some doesn't even quite do it justice, as this matter seems to make up over a quarter of our universe. Nobody knows what it is, and no one has officially seen it. We only see it by not seeing it, if that makes any sense. Dark matter does not interact with any of the matter that we can see, so it really is a scary mystery. It actually kind of reminds me of the Lovecraftian monster the blackness from the stars to sentient darkness I quote torn from the fabric of the cosmos at the center of the universe ah HP Lovecraft he knew it okay next up we have what my nightmares are actually made of at number three we have supermassive black holes supermassive black holes are one of the scariest stories I know of and they are fact rather than fiction what makes the narrative of black holes so scary is that they're so mind-bending we we literally cannot get our heads around them. Black holes are where the laws of time, space, and physics as we know them break down and bend. We can't actually see black holes, but you can see what's around them. Black holes are areas of space that are so, so, so dense that their gravity sucks in everything around them. Not even light, the fastest moving particles that we know, can escape the draw of a black hole. While some stars die and implode on themselves, they create little black holes. But supermassive black holes are billions of times more massive than the sun. Scarily, we have no idea what happens when particles go beyond the event horizon, which is the point of no return when it comes to a black hole. We do have a theory that things get broken down atom by atom and are subjected out to it in a process of spaghettification. But again, this is just a theory. We don't know for a fact. The late great professor Stephen Hawking thought that black holes maybe fold to other universes and honestly, it sends shivers up my spine. Want to know what a black hole sounds like? Maybe not if you want to sleep tonight, but if you don't, have a listen. Meet the only humans to die in space. These are the cosmonauts of Soyuz 11. These three Russian cosmonauts stayed at the Slyat 1 space station in 1971. Now, the crew were detaching from the station and heading back to Earth in their spacecraft when a cabin vent opened. Unfortunately, this meant that their oxygen supply ran out and the pressure dropped. The crew were exposed to the vacuum of space. Now, they all died within seconds, but nobody knew until the spacecraft landed safely. The craft was able to to land in its autopilot mode, and when the doors were opened, the three men were found dead in a pretty gruesome looking way. Ugh, these are the only three people to ever die in space, and it's really, really, really sad. If you didn't think you were gonna cry today, you were wrong. Finally, at number one, we have the last words of opportunity. Is it okay to cry over a robot? I think that maybe I've just been feeling a bit emotional lately, like I've been a bit stressed, I don't know. But when I heard about the death of the Mars rover Opportunity, I actually cried real tears. I'm so sad about it. It hurts. Opportunity has been roving around like a good little robot. It's been on planet Mars since 2004. Spirit and Opportunity, the roving pair, were only supposed to survive 90 days. Now, Spirit lived a very respectable six years until 2010, but Opportunity survived 14 and a half years. Opportunity holds the record for the longest distance driven by an off-Earth wheeled vehicle. Yay, Opportunity! Now, communications were lost with Opportunity after a massive sandstorm on the red planet covered its solar panels. Now, it seems that the last words pinged over to NASA from the rover were, my battery is low, it's getting dark. No! Don't die, Opportunity! It was unfortunately announced on February the 13th, 2019, that Opportunity had stopped functioning. NASA's last message to the rover was to play Billie Holiday's I'll Be Seeing You, which actually breaks my heart even more. When humans do land on Mars, it is said that they will build a memorial to Opportunity and hopefully one day its little robot body can be found. I'll be looking at the moon Opportunity, but I will be seeing you. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have time travel. The first large scale image to be publicly released that was taken by the James Webb Telescope was a mega deep sky image of a galaxy cluster called SMACS0723, which sits over 5 billion light years away from us. 
us. The reason this cluster is so profound is because it offers us a glimpse into the early universe. This cluster, despite only being a couple hundred million light years across, which in the cosmos really isn't a large space at all, still is the home to thousands of galaxies. But if you look even closer at the image, you can see even more. In between these galaxies are twisting and arcing bands of light, which are even more distant galaxies, but their light is being distorted as it passes through this dense cluster of galaxies. Some of these galaxies are the oldest ever observed, some over 13 billion years old. And this is important because we don't yet know fully how galaxies formed in the early days of the universe, and James Webb is helping us put those puzzle pieces together. In our number 9 spot today, we have the complex galaxies. And with these distant galaxies comes a realization about their structures. Some of these galaxies are far more complex than astronomers had once expected. In a study into the deep field image, researchers found a surprisingly high number of distant galaxies that are shaped like disks. Basically, while using Hubble, scientists believed or had a theory that early galaxies were often more distorted by their interactions with neighboring galaxies, and that these distant galaxies were more irregularly shaped than ones nearby, which, not unlike the Milky Way, are normally more regularly formed in the shape of disks. This changed though with the Webb observations because this telescope revealed that there are up to 10 times as many distant disk shaped galaxies than what was previously thought. According to some experts, because of the fact that this contradicts what was once thought about the evolution of galaxies, that much more research needs to be put into this specifically to figure out exactly what this means and how it changes our theories moving forward. In our number 8 spot today, we have Cosmic Noon. Moving on a little later into galactic evolution, one study into Webb's observations focused on Cosmic Noon, which was a period approximately 3 billion years after the Big Bang. It is an important period because of the fact that this is the time when star formation peaked in the universe and the most light was created. An astronomer at the University of California, Santa Cruz, named Ren Seuss, examined images taken by both Hubble and Webb of galaxies at cosmic noon, and this is when Ren realized something. The infrared wavelengths detected by Webb showed that the massive galaxies looked significantly smaller than they did in the Hubble images. Of this discovery, Seuss said, quote, it potentially changes our whole view of how galaxy sizes evolve over time. Based on Hubble images, it was thought or suggested that galaxies start out small and grow larger over time, but these Webb images are showing that maybe this isn't the case and that things might be a little more complicated than anticipated. In our number 7 spot today, we have the exoplanet atmosphere. While there are many tasks that the James Webb will be taking on through its career, one of them is to study alien exoplanets, most especially to figure out what their atmospheres are made of. To do this, when the exoplanet passes in front of its parent star, the light from the star of course passes through the planet's atmosphere before continuing on to its journey wherever. Whatever the atmosphere is made up of, whatever the elements are, it changes the nature of the light and this is something that James Webb can pick up on. WASP-96b is an exoplanet that we've had our eye on for a while now, and it is a giant gassy planet that orbits close to its parent star, and now it is being used to test Webb's abilities before moving on to more challenging targets, such as Earth-like planets that orbit Sun-like stars. There are a few incredible discoveries that Webb has made in doing this, like the first detection in an exoplanet atmosphere of sulfur dioxide, and new readings are even revealing signs of active chemistry within the atmosphere. This is all to say that these tests are yielding incredible results, which is extremely promising when it comes to the future and the understanding of exoplanets. In our number 6 spot today, we have star formation. People who are busy studying galactic chemistry have been receiving some more complicated and interesting data from Webb. One analysis examined light emitted by galaxies that had a redshift of 5 or greater. In this analysis, they found a surprising richness in elements like oxygen. This is important because astronomers had thought that the process of chemical enrichment, which is the process where stars fuse hydrogen and helium in order to form heavier elements, they thought that this took a while, but this analysis made them realize that it is happening in earlier galaxies. This has led experts to say that they really need to start rethinking the speed at which we believe star formation occurs. In our number 5 spot today, we have the star life cycle. Speaking of star formation, Webb is showing us both the birth as well as the death of stars. Images produced by Webb of both the Carina Nebula as well as the Southern Ring Nebula are incredible. The Carina Nebula is a star nursery. It is the birthplace for new stars, and the powerful Webb instruments are able to pierce through the gas clouds and show us 
unbelievable moments in these stars' creations. On the other end is the Southern Ring Nebula, which is produced by a star not unlike the Sun shortly after its demise. By being able to study these different star life stages, we can piece together more about the stories of these stars themselves. In our number 4 spot today, we have Starlight. Back in September of this year, 2022, the James Webb Space Telescope spotted a set of concentric angular rings around a giant but distant star. Of course, we needed to know more, so researchers dove further into the images and found something incredible. A study revealed that these ripples turned out to be puffs of organic dust that were created and then spread across the universe by an odd star system. This might just seem like a cool space occurrence, but this marked the first time researchers were able to find evidence of starlight moving visible matter beyond our solar system, which is absolutely incredible. I mentioned how this star system is odd, and that is because it is made up of two stars that orbit each other. In our number 3 spot today, we have Stevens Quintet. You may be familiar with this term because it was another one of the first photos publicly released from the James Webb Telescope, but it's possible that maybe you didn't know exactly what you were looking at. Stevens Quintet is a visual group of five galaxies, four of which form the first compact galaxy group ever discovered. These four galaxies will all likely eventually merge with each other, but until that happens, we have these stunning visuals of them all dancing together. Space telescopes like James Webb have provided some insights into some emissions coming from between the galaxy group. It is now believed to be shockwave in the intergalactic gas, which is caused by one galaxy falling into the center of the group at, you know, roughly the speed of several million kilometers per hour. You know, just space stuff. In our number two spot today, we have the DART mission. So I'm sure we all remember earlier this year when NASA's DART mission slammed into an asteroid just to see if we could potentially redirect an asteroid in the future if it were on a collision course with Earth. They tested this planetary defense mechanism and it actually seems to have been largely successful and among those watching was none other than the James Webb Telescope. Since the mission, information that Webb collected has been sent back to us on Earth and it is giving us more insight into how to ensure we are using this technology to our advantage and to see how we can improve it. In our number one spot today, we have the cloud discoveries. Speaking of exoplanets, James Webb has observed one that has evidence of silicate-rich clouds. Well, it's actually a brown dwarf that is about 20 times the size of Jupiter. It is called VHS 1256b, and it orbits two small red dwarfs and is 72 light years away from Earth. Webb has also used its skills to reveal details in a gas cloud called Doradus 30, which received the nickname Tarantula tarantula due to its very spooky appearance. This tarantula nebula is located about 161,000 light years away and it resides in the large Magellanic cloud and I mean aside from our very own Milky Way, it is the brightest star forming region in our neck of the cosmic woods. Starting off this countdown, we have the Boomerang Nebula. The Boomerang Nebula is located 5,000 light years away in a large constellation in the southern sky. But don't even think about going there. I mean, just imagine that you did have the capabilities to. But anyways, if humans somehow got there, they would instantly be turned into a human popsicle. Yes, this place is the coldest place in the entire universe as far as we know. The temperature is negative 458 degrees Fahrenheit. For reference, the coldest place on Earth is negative 133.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's Antarctica. So yeah, this place is freezing. There's no way you could get there safely without freezing to death. Coming in at number 9, we have Exoplanet HD 189733b. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure you hit that thumbs up button because it really helps us out. This planet would take your life the second you step foot on it. First off, its wind is incredibly strong. It blows up to 5400 miles per hour. That's seven times the speed of sound. You just end up being spiraled around the planet until you die. But if you somehow survive that, then you definitely wouldn't survive its rainstorms. Apparently its rain feels like shards of glass. So you'll get sliced up from it. Happy travels. In our eighth spot, we have the Pulsar Star PSR B125712. This star is a collapsed core from an exploded star, and it's surrounded by three zombie planets. Yeah, NASA actually refers to them as zombie planets. 
What happens if you get too close to the star and its planets, you ask? Well, according to NASA, and I quote, this undead star spins twin beams of radiation that could incinerate a spaceship foolish enough to come too close. NASA continues on by saying, if you were to land on one of its orbiting planets, you would find sickly irritated auras to light up your certain death. So there you go. Cancel your summer plans, no one's going there. Moving on to number seven, we have HD 80606b. Here we have a gas giant. Now this planet looks creepy with this blood red flamey surface. Seriously, looks like a planet from hell. In fact, it's got some hell-like temperatures. The temperature can go from 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 500 degrees Celsius, to 2200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 1200 degrees Celsius. It can get that hot in a matter of hours. And guess what? Its nights are actually hotter than its days. It's completely weird. Some even say going on that planet would feel like getting blasted alive with a blowtorch. So, that's always fun, right? Coming in at number six, we have RXJ1347. I'm just gonna call it RXJ for short. So RXJ is a massive galaxy cluster surrounded by a gas cloud in the constellation Virgo. It's around five billion light years away from the solar system. And it's considered the hottest place in the universe that we know so far. It's thought that this was created as a result of two galaxy clusters colliding. Now, guess how hot this place is? Seriously, take a wild guess, comment down below. Done? Well, it's 100 million degrees Celsius. Another source said that it's up to three million degrees Celsius. Needless to say, that is burning hot. It could melt you in a second, in less than a second. Yikes. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Boote's Void. This is considered one of the spookiest places in the cosmos. It's also referred to as the Great Nothing. Now, doesn't that sound like a place you want to visit? It gets its name because it's one of the largest known voids in the universe. In fact, it's also called the Super Void. It was discovered by astronomer Robert Kirshner back in 1981. It's located in the constellation of Boötes, hence its name. And it is massive. It's about 330 million light years in diameter. That's approximately 0.27% of the diameter of the observable universe. Yeah, it's an incredibly big void. But it's still unknown how voids are present and being formed. But it's best that we just stay far away from them as possible. Moving on to number four, we have Venus. Yes a planet in our solar system that you really shouldn't visit. Bam, there goes my weekend plans. Anyways, so the farther planets are away from the sun, obviously the cooler they get. Well, that's not the case for Venus. It may be behind Mercury, but it is definitely way hotter than Mercury. In fact, it's the hottest planet in our solar system. Basically, its dense atmosphere traps all the heat in. As a result, the temperatures reach 880 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 471 degrees Celsius. It's hot, hot. Spacecrafts that have landed there have only survived for a couple of hours before being completely destroyed by the heat. So imagine what would happen if humans took a step on that planet. Yeah, it wouldn't be pretty. Moving on to number three, we have Galiza 1214b. This is another planet that could cook you alive. So it was first discovered in December of 2009, and it's located 42 light years away from Earth. Now, this planet is super weird. Despite it being super hot, 200 degrees Celsius, which is 392 degrees Fahrenheit, the planet is made up of water. But you think with that heat, the water would just evaporate. Well, its high atmospheric pressures stop its water from boiling. I should mention that the pressure is so strong, it could crush our bones if we went there. Now, in fact, its water isn't what we know as water. Theirs is more like this thick, hot ice. It's quite weird. Coming in at number two, we have Jupiter. Ah, Jupiter, our solar system's massive gas giant. First, can we just talk about how big Jupiter is? It's 2.5 times more massive than all the other planets in the solar system combined. Compared to Earth, its mass is 318 times as massive as Earth. Now, on to visiting Jupiter. Well, if you do want to go there, guess what? It doesn't have a solid surface, so you would kind of just fall right through and bye-bye. On top of that, you would be frozen by its temperature, which is negative 162 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 108 degrees Celsius. And to top it all off, you'd be exposed to very deadly radiation. And I'm pretty sure your head would just explode from its pressure. So. Yeah, 
have fun visiting Jupiter. And in our one spot, we have the black holes. Black holes scare the crap out of me. Seriously, just imagine Earth getting swallowed up by one. I know it's highly unlikely, but still. Anyways, a black hole is a point in space where gravity is so strong that nothing around it can escape, not even light. NASA states the gravity is so strong because matter has been squeezed into a tiny space. So if you went into space looking for one and got sucked into it, then you would be subjected to something called spaghettification. Basically, the gravity in the black hole would stretch you out like spaghetti. I mean, I love spaghetti, but I don't want to be turned into a human noodle. No thank you. So let me explain this process. Let's say you were headed feet first into the black hole. Your feet are physically closer to the black hole, so they would feel a stronger gravitational pull than your head would. So your feet are being pulled further in, which is stretching your body. Now your arms, because they aren't at the center of your body, would cause your body to be pulled inwards, making you appear super thin. So basically, if we did get sucked into a black hole, we would all be compressed and elongated, looking like human noodles. It's terrifying. Number 10, Oumuamua Asteroid. Despite the advances in lens technology and telescopy, there are things that still take scientists by surprise. Shocking. I know. When the interstellar visitor Oumuamua crossed our solar system in 2017, experts could not complain its origins. Not to mention Oumuamua is the first interstellar object detected passing through the solar system. It was discovered by Robert Work using Pan-STARRS telescope at Leakala Observatory, Hawaii on October 19, 2017, approximately 40 days after it passed its closest point to the sun on September 9th. When it was first observed, Observed, it was about 33 million kilometers from Earth. It is a small object estimated to be between 300 and 3,000 feet long, with its width and thickness both estimated between 115 and 148 feet. It has a red color similar to objects in the outer solar system and has a surface similar to comets. The observation suggests that this unusual object had been wandering through the Milky Way, unattached to any star system, for hundreds of millions of years before its chance encounter with our star system. For decades, we've theorized such interstellar objects out there, and now for the first time we have direct evidence they exist, said Thomas Zerbechin, Associate Administrator of NASA's Science Mission Directorate in Washington in November 2017. Number 9. A Giant Slug on Pluto Yep, you heard that right. These days, NASA continues to receive new data from its New Horizons probe. The data, which includes imagery and measurements collected by the Crafts camera and instruments, continues to provide new and surprising details about Pluto's varied surface. For example, in this photo, it seems like there's a slug on Pluto. Is it a slug though? I'm not too sure. The bizarre image was taken in 2015. The photo covers an area of Pluto that's part of an icy plane, informally as Sputnik Planum. NASA puts the pitted surface into perspective by saying its surface is separated into cells or polygons 10 to 25 miles wide, and when viewed at low sun angles with visible shadows, the cells are seen to have slightly raised centers and rigid margins, with about 100 yards of overall height variation. So Pluto is not the same as Earth, in case any of you were still confused out there. But what is this slug? Is Pluto ruled by slugs? Well, according to IFL Science, this extraterrestrial gastropod is actually a block of ice, which is disappointing. So no slugs, but just ice. Well, that's what they say. Number 8. Faces on Mars As reported by Space, this shocking picture appropriately named the face of Mars was taken by NASA's Viking spacecraft in 1976. Viking 1 spacecraft was circling the planet, snapping photos of possible landing sites for a sister ship, Viking 2, when it spotted the shadowy likeness of a human face. An enormous head nearly 2 miles from end to end seemed to be staring back at the cameras. While some experts explain this image with the phenomenon phenomenon of seeing faces in objects and patterns, known as pareidolia, many still believe this is evidence of extraterrestrial life. I mean, come on, there's literally faces there. Could it be the faces of people who were buried there? And why are there so many faces? What do they mean? I need answers. 
Number 7. Dark Matter Dark matter is a hypothetical form of matter thought to account for approximately 85% of the matter in the universe. Dark matter is called dark because it does not appear to interact with the electromagnetic field, which means it does not absorb, reflect, or emit electromagnetic radiation and is therefore difficult to detect. We're more certain of what dark matter isn't rather than what it is. It's not made of black holes, the light warping they cause isn't present. NASA telescopes have helped us better understand understand this mysterious invisible matter that is five times the mass of regular matter. The first direct detection of dark matter was made in 2007 through observations of the bullet cluster of galaxies by the Shonda X-ray telescope and we continue to learn more every day. Number 6. Black Holes A black hole is a region of space time where gravity is so strong that nothing, including light or other electromagnetic waves, have enough energy to escape its event horizon. Although we can't see black holes. Scientists have been able to study them by observing how they interact with the environment around them with telescopes like Swift, Chandra, and Hubble. In 2017, NASA's Swift telescope mapped the death spiral of a star as it is consumed by a black hole. Later, astronomers used Chandra to have discovered evidence for thousands of black holes located near the center of our Milky Way galaxy, which scares me. Number 5. Kepler 186f Kepler 186f is the first rocky exoplanet to be found within the habitable zone as the region around the host star has the temperature that is right for liquid water. The planet is also very close in size to Earth. While planets have previously been found in the habitable zone, they are at least 40% larger in size than Earth and understanding their makeup is challenging. Kepler 186f is more reminiscent of Earth. Although the size of Kepler 186 86F is unknown, its mass and composition are not. Previous research, however, suggests that a planet the size of Kepler 186F is likely to be rocky. Even though we may not find out what's going on on the surface of this planet anytime soon, it's a strong reminder of why new technologies are being developed that will enable scientists get a closer look at distant worlds, but we still have a lot to learn. Number 4. Tabby Star Tabby Star is an F-type main sequence star in the constellation Cygnus, approximately 1,470 light years away from Earth. Tabby Star is one of the most exciting NASA discoveries. According to Science Alert, Tabby Star is a yellow-white dwarf star with random dimming. Some believe that Tabby Star is a plunet or a moon that has escaped its planet. Unusual light fluctuations of the star, including up to 22% dimming in brightness, were discovered by citizen scientists as part of the Planet Hunters project. In September 2015, astronomers and citizen scientists associated with the project posted a preprint of an article describing the data and multiple interpretations. The discovery was made from data collected from the Kepler Space Telescope, which observed changes in the brightness of distant stars to detect exoplanets. Number 3. The Great Void The giant void is an extremely large region of space with an under density of galaxies and located in the constellation Canis Venetisi. It is the second largest confirmed void to date with an estimated diameter to 1.3 billion light years and its center is approximately 1.5 billion light years away. It was discovered in 1988 and was the largest void in the northern galactic hemisphere and possibly the second largest ever discovered detected. Unlike a black hole, the giant void isn't a hole in space, instead it's curiously empty of both matter and dark matter. And also different from a black hole, light can pass through the void, though scientists believe it contains dark energy. Number 2. Great Red Spot The Great Red Spot is a persistent high pressure region in the atmosphere of Jupiter, producing an anticyclonic storm that's the largest in the solar system. Located 22 degrees south of Jupiter's equator, it produces wind speeds up to 200 268 miles per hour. Observations from 1665 to 1713 are believed to be of the same storm, and if that is correct, it has existed for at least 358 years. It was next observed in September 1831, when it was four times bigger with 60 recorded observations between then and 1878, when continuous observations began. According to Business Insider, the reason why this high curious pressure spot is disappearing is still unclear. 
together. Amy Simon, an expert in planetary atmospheres at NASA's God Red Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, said learning more about Jupiter and its great red spot could help scientists understand Earth's weather system better. Jupiter's weather functions under the same physics as Earth, she said, just millions of miles farther from the sun. Amy also said Jupiter studies could improve our understanding of worlds beyond our solar system. If you just look at reflected light from an extrasolar planet, you're not going to be able to tell what it's made of, she said. Looking at as many possible different cases in our own solar system could enable us to then apply that knowledge to extrasolar planets. Studies predict Jupiter's upper atmosphere has clouds consisting of ammonia, ammonium hydrosulfide, and water. Still, scientists don't know exactly how or even whether these chemicals react to give colors like those in the Great Red Spot. And coming in at number one are gamma ray bursts. Gamma ray bursts are another mysterious space phenomenon that NASA cannot fully understand. As reported by Earth Sky, gamma ray bursts originate in the beam of radiation during stellar explosions, such as supernova or hypernova. On Sunday, October 9th, 2022, a pulse of intense radiation swept through the solar system so exceptional that astronomers quickly called it the brightest of all time. The burst triggered detectors on numerous spacecrafts and observatories around the globe followed up. After combing through all of this data, astronomers can now characterize just how bright it was and better understand its scientific impact. GRB 221009A was likely the brightest burst at X-ray and gamma ray energies to occur since human civilization began, said Eric Burns, an assistant professor of physics and astronomy at Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge. The burst was so bright it effectively blinded most gamma ray instruments in space, which means they could not directly record the real intensity of the emission. US scientists were able to reconstruct this information from its Fermi data. The signal from GRB 221009A had been traveling for about 1.9 billion years before it reached Earth, making it among the closest known long GRBs whose initial or prompt emission lasts more than two seconds. Astronomers think these bursts represent the birth cries of black holes formed when the cores of massive stars collapse under their own weight. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 terrifying photos from other planets NASA can't even explain. Mm -hmm.